Hey guys, welcome to EMF. Today, we'll be playing with some limits without the use of L'Hopital's Rule. I know the first thing that came to your mind when you look at these two questions is L'Hopital's Rule, right? Because immediately you can see that when you plug in 1 and negative 1 into the expression, you get a 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, which is the passport to use L'Hopital's Rule. But today, our rule is that we can't use L'Hopital's rule. And I will show you how I do that. So before we begin, you have to look at these two limits here, the expression. Do you feel like they are very similar to something that you learn in calculus, specifically derivative? I'm talking about the definition of derivative. Of derivative. So most of the book will write like this. The derivative function f of f prime of x is given by f uh, sorry is given by the limit as x as h approach zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, right? And the meaning of this limit here is that because you need to solve the tangent line problem, which is you need to find the slope of tangent line to the curve at the point, right? So imagine this is your curve and you want to find the slope of tangent line at this point. What you do is that you actually try to find two points on the curve. One is exactly at the point where you want to find the tangent line and simply another point that is close to that point and you connect them, draw is what we call as a second line, right? And then the distance, I mean the difference between the x coordinates, we call them as h, which means this point here has the x coordinate of x, and this one is x plus h, all right? So in order to make your second line to resemble your tangent line, you try to approach it, right? You try to shift your second line. What you do is you try to make this h as small as possible, right? So that is why we are taking the limit as h approach zero. Okay, so if, it is, if this point is, okay, the one in red, this one, if it is, x and fx then automatically this point the one in green it is x plus h then f of x plus h right so the slope okay we are thinking about the second line again the slope of the second line of the second line is f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x, which is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And remember, we want h to be as small as possible so that we can say that it is the slope of tangent line, right? We are taking the limit as h approach zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, okay? So some books may write f prime x like this, the limit as h approach zero, f of x minus f of x minus h over h. And two of them basically mean the same thing, just that you are approaching from different sides, all right? So the meaning of the second expression here is that, okay, you still have the, the, the curve and you want to find the slope of tangent line at this point. And this time install from the right, you choose a point at the left, okay? And you draw a second line and then you approach like this, like that, like that, until it becomes a tangent line, okay? So this time, this is your x and this is your x minus h, okay? So the distance between this and this is h. And again, and again, the slope of the second line is given by f of this time this time we are using f of x minus f of x minus h and divided by remember you need to correspond your x1 x2 y1 y2 together right so it is this time it is x minus x minus h 
okay? Then after some algebra, you have f of x minus f of x minus hash over hash. And the slope of tangent line, it is the limit as hash approach zero, f of x minus f of x minus hash over hash, which basically means the same thing, all right? So this is, the, this is how usually people write the definition of derivative. Okay, now I will introduce an alternative formula for the definition of derivative, okay? So what I do is very simple. Instead of writing x plus h, I will let z be x plus h. Meaning, for this graph, right, instead of letting this be x plus h, it is now z, and it is now f of z, and then this, okay, the whole thing here will change. Okay, I think I will directly change it here, okay? So if we let z be x plus h, then what happened to our formula? f prime x is equals to limit, okay, this time you take, yeah? Instead of, let, instead of writing h approach zero, because now we are trying to eliminate h, right? We are saying that z is approaching x. Okay, z is approaching x. So we are right, z approach x as the limit here. And then f of z minus f of x over, instead of writing h, we are right, z minus x. Okay, so this is an alternating formula for the first definition of derivative. Okay, then what about the second one? So as you can see, because we are choosing a point on the left of our point, so we will let our z be x minus h this time, which means this is no longer x minus h, it is z. And this point here, okay, this point here is still our f, uh, x, f, x. And this point here is now z f of z okay so if we replaced our z with x, uh, our x minus h with z the second formula will now become f prime x equals to the limit as z sorry x approach z okay actually that actually means the same thing okay and this time it is f of x minus f of z over x minus z okay so these are the two alternative formula for the definition of derivative we'll now use these two alternative formula to evaluate our limits today okay so as you can see for number one it is actually the derivative of the function fx equals to x to the 100, isn't it? At just that we are evaluating f prime of 1 at 1, right? Because our z, our z is 1, okay? So let me show you. Okay, I think I will use the second formula here. It is the limit as z, uh, x, who is our x? It's still x, right? approach 1, our z is 1, of f of z is 100, minus f of 1, it is 1 to the 100, which is still 1, then x is still x, z is 1. Right, so this is actually the same, okay, this is actually the derivative of this function. So very conveniently, we can just say that this is equals to, we differentiate x to the 100, we get 100x, then to the 99. Remember, the power rule, bring down the power, power minus 1. Okay, then what else? At x equals to 1. So it is 199, which is 100. This cosine. Simple, isn't it? For the second limit, 
obviously you can see that it is actually the derivative of x to the 2 over 9 at x equals to negative 1. So immediately you can do the differentiation which you bring down the power power minus 1 and we evaluate it at x equals to negative 1. So you have to be a little bit careful when you are doing this because when you are raising negative 1 to a negative power, okay, it doesn't matter if it is a negative power because it is just a reciprocal, right? The problem is with the with is with the numerator of that fraction, which is 7. It is an odd number, which means negative 1 is still negative 1. It will not become positive unless it is raised to an even numerator or even power. Hence, it is 2 over 9 times negative 1, which gives you negative 2 over 9. And that's it.